everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to another At The Bench update. Um, so before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit the little bell to get notifications of all our latest videos and all the products you see me using in these videos, you can find linked in the description down below. Click it, I'll take you to the forum. There's a 90 plus long list of all the stuff I use and you can see here. Uh, click on it and it will take you to the uh, products and where you can buy them from as well. So, we're back. It's been 10 days since the bench update. I was kind of on the fence whether to do one. Made a lot of videos lately. We finished the Aston. Uh, we started the bike build. Um, we did a Lego build the other day as well. Me and James, which was good. Um, so, I was on the fence because I've kind of shown everything I've worked on. But I like to do these for continuity. Um, and I thought there's a couple of things I want to add. One, I want to have a look at the uh, Optivisor from Power Can I've been recommending lately. So, we'll have a little bit of a closer look at that. And something I said I'd do a few weeks back and I didn't do was have a good look at all the bike kits I've built. Um, so I'm going to get all those out in a minute and we'll have a really good look through and a chat about them as well. Um, so what's going on? The classic car build, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s is still ongoing. You got to the 15th of September to finish that. So we've had some cracking builds finished. Uh, Dan Edmonds finished his Alpha the other day and that thing looked phenomenal. Um, what did I build? That's a good question. Now. What did I build? See, my memory's shocking. I forgot what I built now. GT40. There we go. See what I mean about my memory? All over the shop. I built the GT40. Very happy with that. Um, I should edit that, that out really, but we'll leave it in so you can see what a pillock I am. Um, there's a few other builds on the forum ongoing. So, yeah, if you if you take them part, get try and get it finished because it's uh, an interesting build. And uh, hopefully we'll see a few more cross the finish line by the 15th of September. Um, future buddy builds. Um, I was talking about this last night after the live show. Um, McLaren GTR. I think is going to be a definite one. Me and Sam already agreed on that. And somebody said about pickup trucks. So let me know what you think about that. I quite like the idea of the pickup truck. It's a little bit different. Um, it's whether we can get the interest. Because uh, I don't know if Sam's very interested. He might be. Um, but I know he was on the GTR McLaren, we've got a few of those to uh, look at as well. So let me know your thoughts on that as well, and uh, we could probably do a GTR build at some point. Somebody did ask about a bike build, I think it was Claire actually. Uh, we did a bike build not long ago and it kind of sat my mojo a touch. Um, so yeah, um, I don't know, we'll play the video. let's get this video build done first and we'll see how we get on. But I'm really enjoying that bike so much. Um, the video builds give me that well needed kick up the backside to get going so it's good and thanks for all the feedback and uh, hopefully we can keep the parts going regular and really get it going and get it out there um hangouts uh also a change over to jitsi uh or jizz meat as i was coined it lately and uh yeah that's going well no a few people aren't getting on along with it but um the alternate all the time as they go things are changed almost daily on it they're adding and taking things away making it better I'm going to add some feedback to their form on things I think should change. And as a live feed, it's stable, it's clear, sounds good, and off air it's good as well. Good to see some new people join the off air hangouts as well. Uh, we have Mark joining us last night and Dan Edmonds. It was good to meet you both, fellas. Make sure you pop back in. Um, and yeah, the links are always there if you want to join us. They're all in the description to these videos, the off air hangout group. Click it, and you can come and model away while chatting away on a webcam to a few uh, strange people. It's really worth a visit. Um, so yeah, Aston Martin build, very happy with that. Um, it was a nice video build, really nice kit to uh, do as well, lovely kit. And uh, very, very happy with the way it turned out and the colour choices I made, I really am. Um, so we'll have a little chat about that in a minute. I'm just trying to think where I need to get through. Uh, Ultra Modern Products, myself and Lee's business. Uh, we did an offer last week on 30% off thinner and cleaner. If you're David Ailes, that's nearly half off. Nearly half off. And the orders went absolutely mental. We had 200 orders last week, which is quite a lot. Uh, they're still coming in thick and fast. So we've got a little bit behind. So if you're prone ordering, just bear with us. It's bank holiday weekend as well, which is sod's law. So Monday is uh, bank holiday day. So there's no post at all. So if you're prone ordering and it's not arrived yet, just give us a little bit more time. And uh, it will arrive, trust me. We'll get, we're going through them as quick as we can. Um, and yeah, it's just been pandemonium. It's good. It's very, very good. But it's just been manic absolutely manic so thanks for everybody that uh, supported us and helped out my we were putting orders and much much appreciated it really is 
Uh, earlier in the week, uh, myself and Anne James went to the Imperial War Museum in Manchester. I'll chuck a few pics up. Absolutely fantastic. It's the first museum James has ever been to. He's only four, he's ten to five next month. And uh, he absolutely loved it. A few, we were being a war museum. It's quite hard to explain to a four year old about some of the stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's things on the Holocaust in there. We, we, he's way too young to learn about that yet. Um, but trying to tell him about bombs and things like that, it, it's, yeah, I don't want to scare the life out of the poor little guy. And quite poignant in there, there's a couple of steel sections out of the Twin Towers. So we tried to explain to him what that was. Uh, and again, trying to explain to a four-year-old who are terrifying, it's quite difficult to do. Um, so, yeah, it, it's worth a visit. If you're not being, I mean, it's not the London one, it's, that's immense in there. But it's a free uh, exhibit to Manchester. Um, got a fantastic gift shop. I got some, got some really cool stuff, including my really cool operations room sign above my door there. Um, some cool postcards, which are there, funny enough. Way right behind me. Um, it's a very cool uh, place to go for free. And a great gift shop, really good gift shop. Um, gift shops are always great museums, aren't they? This was really good. Um, but well worth a visit. Um, some really cool stuff in there. And uh, like I say, James's first museum, he really enjoyed this. He's got one more week off, and he starts primary school. Um, first year in primary school, so it's going to be absolutely terrifying for us, not him. Us, so we're going to make next week as good as we can for us. So we're trying to give a few more places to go local to. If you've got any suggestions, pop them in the comments. We're open to hear them all. And uh, yeah, so it's been a busy old week. We're busy modelling, family time, work videos everything it's been a manic manic week so i thought what should i do today i've got a video to do on the primer still i'll be honest i didn't really want to do that today i thought i'd do a bench update because moto gp starts in about an hour and a half and uh, i want to go watch that so i thought i'd do a quick bench update and we'll uh, have a look at a few things and have a little chat there we go I'll probably rambled on phrases on a saturday i always ramble on don't know why um and that's it really so yeah um Good builds going well, live show's gone fantastic, great live show last night, the guys are brilliant, they've joined me, and all you people that watch are absolutely superb as well, so we thank you all, and a very kind of Sam to donate that truck kit last night, superb prize, well done Dave for winning it as well, congrats. Um, right, let's have a little chat about the Aston, so I'll put some pics up on screen, and we'll have a little chat, so this is Tamiya's Aston Martin DBS, 24 scale, really hard to find kit, fetches absolutely ridiculous money, so if you've got one, Enjoy the build. Don't screw it up because there's no spares for it, and I doubt you'll get another one. Uh, but really nice kit to build. Pretty simple to build. Not too bad at all. I only had one issue, and that was with the metallic uh, engine um, stickers, which I believe need to go on the gloss coat. So my fault. Uh, but overall, very very happy with it. This was primed in UMP white primer. It was painted in zero paints uh, vertigo blue, which is an Aston colour. It was 2K cleared in the Pro Range 2K, which came out absolutely fantastic, straight out the airbrush. Uh, the interior is a mix of uh, zero paints beige and tan. If you go back to the video, you'll see a bit of a farce I had with that. But I had to mix them together to get the colour appropriate. Um, the wheel is a gunmetal TS... I forget the number now. Um, but they're a TS uh, gunmetal colour. Um, colour combo really happy with very very happy with um it was polished with a polish we'll get we'll move on to that at a later date um lp paints used around the windows for the um chrome trim and they work absolutely phenomenal they really really did so very very happy how that turned out and uh, yeah it looks great i'm very very happy with it and uh, it's a stunning looking car it really really is so Another video build under my belt, another finish build under my belt, and uh, yeah, another great kit to add to the display case, which seriously needs um, yeah sorting out and dusting, because it's shocking in there. I've never known anything attract us like models and Lego. Terrible. Speaking of Lego, uh, we bought the Lego Luna Land the other day. Um, I did a video build on it. If you want to go watch it, it's on the channel. It's not going to get as much views as the other builds, but it's different. I completely sped up the entire process. And this is it. It looked absolutely great. Um, superb piece of modelling. Modelling of Lego. Um, and yeah, good to kind of honour the 50th anniversary of what is mankind's greatest achievement. Um, no small feat. And we did go to the moon. I'm going to say it again, because we did. 
we did land on the moon and a really nice little display piece and it fits in nicely with all my other lego which i'll put another picture up here over there um it fits in nice with it and uh, very very happy with that as well good fun and uh, james enjoyed building the figures he's a little bit young for big sets like this he likes his own little things that he builds himself and he likes making his own stuff up uh and he got a load of freebies from the lego shop which was cool as well Right, enough waffle about that. Let's go overhead. Let's have a look at some of these bike builds. They are the current video build, how that's going. And then we'll have a look at the uh, the Optivisor I've been recommending as well. Right, okay. So, first things first. Um, we'll have a quick look at the Aston. I've got some proper pictures and we'll have a proper talk about it in a minute. When I go to the pictures because I prefer to do that. But this is the Aston we did for the, um, the video build. Very happy how this turned out. It's a lovely, lovely kit. Um, that's just silly money though, but happy to get a finish, happy to get a video build out of it. Very happy with the uh, colour, the blue and the interior tan. 2K went well, all polished up lovely. Very, very happy with this and it's a great looking car. Um, so we'll have a proper chat about this in a minute. We'll do some picks and we'll do the usual obligatory talk through about it. But what I'm going to show now is all the bikes I've built. I've said I'm going to do this a couple of times now. Um, <laughs> and I didn't. I showed a couple of them, a couple of pictures of them, but not really very good. So I'll show where I started, how I got to them, why I got stalled on the builds, even though I love them so much. I'll explain why I got massively stalled building these bikes. So I started building bikes back in 2003 when I got back into this hobby. They didn't turn out great. Seams weren't filled. They were sprayed with a um, aerosol powered airbrush. And they didn't look great, but I really enjoy building them. They go together really well. And um, I must have built a good um, four or five of them back then. Uh, the Tiara Racing uh, R1. Uh, the Kawasaki Ninja Road Bike. Um, what else to do? I can't remember now, to be honest, but I did a whole load of them back then. So when I got back in this in 2010, I had no interest in bikes at all. I was building armour and aircraft. Kind of got a bit bored of armour. Moved to aircraft. Just get a bit bored of uh, aircraft as well. So back in 2016, I built um, Tamiya's new Panigale. So I'll zoom in a touch here. You can see so this was the first one I built. Um, <laughs> to make it easy, I chucked a whole hobby design uh, detail upset in there. Uh, and did my first ever carbon decaling on it, which didn't turn out great. If you look at the front uh, fender, wheel arch, mudguard, you'll see that... Quite a bit of ripples in my 2K. Uh, this thing's actually loose. I can take it off, actually. Um, I've got a nasty seam line in the top of it. There's rips in the two, in the um, carbon. Didn't go great, but it was my first, you know, real pop of a bike. And it came out well. It's something I will revisit another time. I've got another Panigale in the stash. Um, and I've got the uh, Martini scheme for it as well. But on the whole, it turned out all right. I did it in the center colours. Um, learnt a lot building it, and on the whole, it came out pretty well. If I was just going to replace a few things, it'd probably be the carbon work. I'd redo it. I've definitely got the hanger carbon now. Um, but as a Senna special edition, I'm a big Senna fan. Um, I saw this bike and literally fell in love with it. Thought I've got to build that, so I did. So I built it in the Senna colours, um, and it came out well. It's a lovely kit. This, if you're looking for a first bike kit. This is where I go for the Panigale. There's a few schemes you can do it in. It goes together great. Nice simple decal schemes. You stick to the standard one, and it falls together. They don't really need any detail upsets um, out the bat, um, but it came well. Um, did learn quite a few things with this. Um, some of the P is worth adding. Uh, some of it's not, in my opinion. Uh, but that's all personal preference. But on the whole, it came out well. I then built my first MotoGP bike which was Tamiya's uh, Kawasaki ZXRR again through the kitchen sink at this the whole lot literally everything I could add to it I did so it's got a full detail upset from I think it's Top Studio uh, we've got the fork set the Ducati had the fork set as well um, I got my pit lane uh, books back then as well to uh, get reference on these so I wired it I had all the sensors it's all hidden under the fairing so again if I was to redo this I'd add the magnets for sure and this is definitely a bike I may revisit at a later date um, 
added everything to this um, and it came out really well very happy with it nice color nice striking scheme and this was my first bike I was properly happy with it's definitely one I'll revisit because the 2k isn't the greatest this is zero this is zero 2k or is it 1k I actually can't remember what I, two, I cleared this in now um, but it's one I definitely will revisit I've not got one in the stash but I think I will get one and add it in there because I'd like to do it again the decal is not exactly perfect um, I did I get a reaction I can actually see it now so I'm gonna guess this is 1k clear coat and the clear coat's not great so this is the lacquer clear from hero boy which is shocking for eating decals but on the whole the bike came out well and there's a quite a few parts I could salvage off this um, to reuse so that's definitely one I may revisit at a later date um, I think I then built um, the VFR 750 from Tamiya I think it was, I'm not a bike person, so I think it was the white one. Um, it's the rival to the RC3, I think it's a VFR 750. Um, and that didn't turn out brilliant, so I actually got rid of that on eBay. Um, myself and Tim then decided to buddy build the 916 Ducati. Um, this is an old kit, it's not nice at all. It's a bit boring, and we both lost our mojo on this. Uh, did it in the center colors again, because this was a center edition bike again. Um, and this thing is totally out of the box by the carbon decal and the carbon exhausts um, some of the panels here and there and again the clear coat's not the best I'm trying to think if I did this before the Kawasaki or after don't know, I'm going to guess it was after so again, it's not something I'm going to revisit because I didn't enjoy the kit at all it's a very simple kit uh, and it's an old one now and it didn't uh, interest me as you can see Seam lines on the top. I'm going to guess this was before that Kawasaki, to be honest. Um, seam lines are shown. Learned a lot on these bikes of getting rid of these seams. Um, you've got to make sure you get rid of them. Even more prominent than her craft seams. If it's going to show, it'll show on these. So, yeah, wasn't impressed this one. I started it and about a year later came back to it and finished it. Very nearly just got rid of it, but happy I did. I then started to build. Um, Tamiya's uh, Ducati Desmo Sedici. Um That was going great, no problem at all, until it came to the decals and I had massive bleed through on the aftermarket Renaissance Marlboro decals. Uh, it just killed the bill for me, totally killed it, and I was like, oh god. So I got rid of that, sold it, part started, moved on. Thought, right, let's let's step her up a game and we'll build one of Tamiya's MotoGP again. So I started the Tech 9 bike, um, the Wizard RM1. Uh, the 09 version and as soon as it comes to clear coat and the decals just self-destructed I thought it was me so it kind of with that and the Ducati it sapped all the bike mojo it was gone and I just started building cars and aircraft again um, I was having issues with the decals they were just getting eaten by the clear coat for no apparent reason I was using 2k which is you know almost totally inert on decals it doesn't really bother them at all and they were just disintegrating in front of me. So, didn't build any bikes for a while, left it as is, and then thought, right, I really want to build a bike. You'll hear me on loads of these bench updates saying, I really want to build a bike, but the mojo was just sapped by these builds going wrong. So, last year, I think it was, I thought, right, let's stop buggering around and let's build a bike. Uh, this is a rare one. Uh, trying to find this Kanika Minolta uh, RC211. Is a hard one to find. I built this and uh, this thing came out really really well. This is a beautiful bike. Absolutely stunning and I'm very happy how this came out. My carbon work, uh, I stepped up my game as you can see. We are pretty flawless there. No problem at all over the clutch cover. Very very happy with this. This is a completely out the box build uh, except for the fork set. Everything else is just a Tamiya kit and um, with working on the car for so long, my carbon work had got well. So on these covers on the side, over here. Now, on the real bike, this should be carbon as well, but I didn't do it on this one, but you'll see in a minute that I did on the next. Um, very happy with this. This turned out really well. Um, and it's a beautiful looking bike. Absolutely stunning. So that's Pearl. I think it's TS45. Um, absolutely lovely colour and such a striking skiing this was 2k i think this was meeper 2k if i remember back then and uh, again no problems with the 2k the decals 
flawless, absolutely, but, but, excuse my fingerprints on the bottom where I've been holding it, flawless and uh, very happy, carbon in like on the hugger at the back, again, probably stepped up my game, got the carbon in right, learnt about piecing the carbon, um, you don't have to get these all on one piece, if you can use an edge or a corner or a recess, you can get that carbon in there, no problem at all. So this was brilliant. This really invigorated the mojo uh, and really got me interested in building the bikes again. Um, and I think after building this one, I went out and bought the brand new Africa Twin from Tamiya. Uh, I'm not going to get that one out because it's huge and it's quite delicate, but I'll stick some pictures up. Uh, hopefully I remember. <laughs> but this really brought back the mojo for the bike until the next one, which we'll talk about in a sec. But this is a beautiful bike, very, very happy how this thing turned out. Uh, I've got pictures uh, on the forum and Facebook, if you search for it, you'll find them. And uh, if you can get this bike and do it, it's a stunning scheme. It's probably one of the best looking MotoGP bikes there ever was. And uh, very, very happy. I'm a big fan of these Hondas, as you'll probably guess. I do like the RC211V. So, after building that and the uh, Africa Twin, I was like, yeah, we've got the bike mojo back. Let's have a crack at that 09 Tech 3 again. I managed to pick one up cheap on eBay. I think for 45 quid, I got the kit and a detail upset on the fork set. And I thought, right, let's get back to it. Start building the 09 bike again. Did the decals. Exact same problem on the decals. As soon as the 2 k them, they disintegrated. Again, bike mojo. Whoop, gone. And I thought, this, there's something up with this bike. There's something up with these decals. This can't be made. Two different um, 2 ks First one was Meeper. Second one was Pro Range, which had 2K dozens of cars with, with no issue whatsoever. And I thought, this has got to be those kit decals. They were cartographed decals. And I tried an experiment. If you remember, I, I did a spoon of each decal, same decals, on two different spoons. And I barrier coated one with an acrylic uh, gloss and didn't on the other. And the one that I didn't barrier coat, the decals got eaten. And the one I did, uh, they were fine absolutely perfect so there was obviously an issue with those decals um 2k is very low on thinner it's not a hot 2k at all a uh, clear coat at all so it shouldn't affect your decals so there's obviously some issue with those they were cracking they were absolutely shocking if i can find a picture i'll pop it up and it just it was just like oh my god it killed the mojo it really really did again so this is why you'll see me constantly going in videos i really want to build a bike but when you're getting setbacks like that with kits that cost upwards of £100 a time with irreplaceable decals, it's kind of a kick in the teeth. So, I think it was earlier in the year, about March this year, I thought, right, let's stop, insert swear word, around, and let's build a bike I've wanted to build for a long, long time um, from a Moto, uh, MotoGP legend. So, I picked the RC211V, the 3 the white one's the 06, this is the 03. Uh, like I say, I love these Hondas. I think they're one of the best looking bikes that MotoGP's ever had. Um, and they're beautiful. And obviously this is Rossi's bike as well. The old uh, goat, the old legend. And um, complete out of the box. Fork set, carbon, rest of it's all out of the box. And um, yeah, my favourite bike build to date. One regret, I wish I'd done the magnets. I really, really do. Probably can rectify it. If I take the screws out, I could probably get magnets in there and put a PE plate over it. Like the real bike does have uh, metal fixings there. So maybe I'll do that at a later date. We'll get this bike we're building currently done and come back. But this, I love this bike. I love the scheme on these Repsol bikes. I love the shape of them. And they are beautiful. Now this was carbon fibred everywhere I could. Again, I've got the references. So we've got full carbon, full carbon, full carbon. It's all in here. Uh, carbon clutch cover, it's everywhere, it really is all over the place, and then on the other side, again, carbon hugger, use different types of carbon, I don't tend to 2k or clear cut my carbon, I like the satin look of it, um, and as you say, pretty floors, we've got one little floor in that one, and to be honest, actually it's a bit of dust, yeah, it's a bit of crap on the top of it actually, um, but very happy with that. Again, piece the carbon. Once you learn how to piece it, it goes together really well. And again, this is a beautiful bike. Definitely one of the, the best looking ones. It's up there with the Kineco Manolta as an iconic bike. And uh, loved it. So this rekindled the love. Um, and it's just been festering along <laughs> for the past few months. Me wanting to build a bike. 
and uh, want to video build it. So that's where we're at now with the uh, Casey Stoner bike. Um, but I love these Hondas, um, just do. I don't know what it is about them, I think I love the shape of them. They're a very pretty bike, and obviously with the 46 on it from all Valentino Rossi, it's an iconic bike as well. So that's it with the bike. So yeah, really enjoy building them, and they haven't gone wrong. Um, I've really enjoyed building them. That Tamiya Africa Twin is a lovely, lovely kit. It's a big, big bike, uh, but it is very, very nice. So that's where we're at with the old builds. I'm going to move all these out of the way. So if you want to see some of these, they'll be at Telford. Um, I will bring, hopefully, all the RC 211s. Uh, the Kanika and Alter, the Repsol, and uh, the Casey Stoner's bike I'm building now. I'll build, bring all those. You can have a look. Um, so currently we're building Casey Stoner's bike, which is that one, the one that we're video building at the minute. Beautiful looking bike again. O O6, the same as the Kanika Minolta. Um, and we've got the fork set, loads of detail up. So if you want to see what's in this, go to the pre-video build um, ramble, because I talk about it in that. But on this, um, because it's being video built, I've done something I don't normally do. I've de-sprued everything. And I spent the entire live show last night cleaning everything up. If you're watching, you might have seen. So all these parts are cleaned up, kind of ready. These just need looking at, uh, and the exhaust needs assembling. Uh, all the engine parts are built up. So I put them in a bit of foam to protect them because they are painted up. And those LP Tampi paints are just stunning. They really are brilliant. Uh, from high chrome parts, high shine, like these, to the matte colours. They're lovely. So we put everything in here, and why have I done that? I normally leave them on the sprue, clean them up as I go, but we're doing the video for me to go, right, we're going to build the wheels and the brakes, and then I've got to stop the camera to clean everything up. It takes time out of the day on the video, whereas now I can just crack on and do it. You don't want to see me cleaning parts up on camera. Uh, it's exceptionally boring. So I thought we'll do it this way. So everything's in here, really. The only thing that's not in here is the forks, but they could go in here out of the way. The decals are in the box with the carbon set. Screws and whatnot are in here, safely kept in, and all the parts are in here safe. Um, just be aware if you do start cutting parts off the sprue, triple check those sprues before you put them in the bin, because I nearly threw a part away yesterday, and nearly threw the, the screen away the other day by accident, and I have been through the wheelie bin out the front before, um, looking for parts. So yeah, pay attention. But everything's in here. Just go clean some of these parts up today. A lot of these aren't used on the uh, the D sprue. Um, bring a clean up what's needed and anything that's surplus goes in this little front bit for now and uh, Then we're all ready to go with the video and we just crack on with the build so everything's in there ready and, uh, Hopefully you're enjoying the bike build at the minute because I certainly am and the best thing to do is once you clean the parts up Circle them with a pen so you know that they're cleaned up and they're in the box ready to go So there we go, that's bike builds Aston we're at the current one on all my old bike builds there. So if you've got any questions, please uh, comment away and I'll answer them as we go. Right, okay, so just before we go back, the <laughs> Optivisor I've been rambling about in videos and the live show for the past few days. Um, this is it, so it's Power Can. I'll put the link in the description down below. Um, it's off Amazon. You can probably pick them up from elsewhere. Dirt cheap, this cost me uh, £18. There's a couple on there in damaged boxes, you can pick up her off 14. It's really cheap, and for that you'd expect not a lot. But you do, so you get the Optivisor, um, and you get your five lenses, cleaning cloth, and a USB lead for charging the light. So the power goes, I think it's from one, one to three and a half times. So you get one, one half, two, two and a half, three and a half. So plenty of options there. I'm on two, my side's pretty good. So I'm on two power. Now what I do like about this, obviously you've got the flip on the front for the uh, the lens itself. You've also got a secondary one should you want to add it. Now the beauty of that is you can have a two times in here and a one times or one and a half. And when you need extra power you can fold that down and go up magnification straight away. So that's a really cool little feature. Um, the only thing i found for me doing the videos is with that stuck forward like that you can see it on camera sometimes. So I'm just using the one lens for now. On the front, there's also a little loop that you can fold out, and I'm not sure what power that is, but it's pretty high power. And again, that adds instant magnification that you can see really close up, and it folds out of the way nicely. Uh, it's fully adjustable, so you can adjust the headband tension, because you can lift it up off your head, so when you're wearing it, 
you can lift it up out of the way. My only criticism is when you keep lifting it up and down, these loosen, and you've got to keep tightening them up. Once they loosen, they've got a habit of falling down very slowly in front of your eyes until you can't see what you're doing. Once tree tightened you're all good though. It's a bit of a pain, uh, but not too bad. Loads of comfort on the back. You've got sponge pad in there, 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 and there. They are very, very comfortable to use. I had them on for three hours last night in the live show. No problem at all. And the adjustment on the back is really good as well. It clicks out. You adjust it. It goes absolutely massive, way past my huge meat head. Um, and then once you've adjusted it, you click it back in place and it locks it in place. No problem at all. Also comes with a light on the front. So it's two power lights. So there's one power, two power. That is rechargeable by USB. There's a lead in the back and it is fully adjustable as well it moves should move up and down there we go it moves up and down there we are and it even moves side to side a little bit gimmicky the light it does work i don't tend to have it on though if i'm honest um, but it's there if you need any close vision or have a good look at and um i think for the money this thing is good value it works well it's nice and clear i mean it's no it's no zeiss lens but you know, for the money, there's good optical quality there. And I really can't fault it all. I very nearly bought a pair of Zeiss ones, which are one and a half mag. Um, in fact, actually, it might not be one and a half mag in here. I might have changed that. I am, I am one and a half. Um, I very nearly got a pair of Zeiss. I am tempted to get them. I'm a bit of a, a kit heart, if you know me. I like to buy good quality stuff. But for the money, this thing's unbeatable. I know a few other guys have bought them. And it'd be good to see our long-term views on them. As long as when you get them out, you don't snap the front. <coughs> Ow. Um, but yeah, good. I'll put the link in the description if you're going to have a look. Um, this is what I look like wearing them. Yes, they uh, make you look like a bit of a... See you next Tuesday. Um, but hey, who cares? Um, if they help you with your vision or with your modelling, does it really matter what you look like? Kind of. But anyway, who cares? So there we go. That's the power can. Optivisor. Right, so there we go. Um, as you see, a few bike builds there. Some I'm, I'm not completely happy with, and I will revisit the Panigale. Probably won't do the Senna version, but I might do um, the Martini or even out the box. I've not done it out the box. Um, I'm weird like that. Unless it's something I really like, I don't tend to do them out the box as much. Uh, or I'll change the colours or the scheme or the decal scheme. If I can, I always will. I'm a bit strange. I've got my own funny quirks. If you know me, you'll know what I mean. Um, the ZXRR is definitely one I'll revisit. Um, it, it's good in some places, not in others. I think it, it needs um, a refresh. It was a long time ago when I built that. It's got to be three years. So I think it could do a revisit. So maybe we'll do that one again at a later date. Um, but the others, the 916 isn't a great kit. There are others, super, very happy with those. And hopefully this one my video build and the turn out just as well. I love those Hondas. Said it about six times now, but I really do love those Hondas. I've got a ton of them behind me. Um, and they're great. Iconic bikes, and they are beautiful as well. So there we are. Um, next video build video um, should be up a couple of days, hopefully. Um, we'll get all those engine parts detailed. We'll get the bodywork sanded and any seams sorted that are there. And hopefully try and get it to primer and paint. So that'd be good. And then we can crack on with the engine and get all that detailed up and built the frame and uh, really crack on with the build. It's going really well. Happy how it's going. Um, car build. Um, we'll talk about my car build um, now. <laughs> I've, I've got a car build lined up, but I'm kind of on the fence whether to start it. I've spoke about it before. Uh, I want to do one of Tamiya Domino model bell kits. Uh, uh, yeah, bell kits. Uh, Escort Cosworths. Um, I wanted to do the Bastos scheme. The only scheme I had was the half red, half white scheme I showed in one of the last bench updates. And I was talking about a new one that was coming out that's mostly red. I've got that scheme now. I bought it the other day. It cost me 33 quid posted. I bought it directly from Reggie Model. Uh, it came with a set of resin uh, Speedline wheels as well. So I've got, I've got a pick of the kit and all the bits and bobs there. I've got the paint for it. This is the car as well. Lovely looking car. I really want to start it. But I don't always interest in the bike. I don't think I will. I'm committed now with video building it anyway. But I kind of want to start. I think we'll get a little bit further into the bike and then we'll start a car. But that's going to be my next bike, uh, car build for sure. So hopefully 
stick around we'll do it um that was another one as well the other uh, me and dan Edmonds were talking last night another possible group build buddy build uh group b cars there's not a massive amount of them um in kit form yet but there's a few there so maybe we can do a group b buddy build at a later date as well there we are so uh that's today's bench update i'm off to watch mojo gp and uh like i said we'll get some videos up as soon as we can i've got the primer one i want to do as well so that'll be up uh hopefully next week at some point and i've got some reviews i want to get done as well thanks for watching today as always check out the national scale model facebook page and forum umpretail.com they'll have the bench group and the offer hangout group as well and my poor ism modeling page all the links are in the description down below as are links to all the products i use in my videos and if you're not subscribed to the channel subscribe and hit notifications and give the video a thumbs up leave a comment i answer them all I'll catch you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye. On ya.